I'd rather have a good discussion with you. So what I'm going to go over is what the stocking plan is now we've been talking about for the last three years. I'll let you know what we settled on. I'll look at some regulation changes that are, have already happened or are coming. Um, some harvest for Lake Michigan, so you have an idea how the fishery's been. Status of salmon. Commercial fishing statute. I won't spend a ton of time on it since Dennis already kind of talked about it. 20, 20 consent decree negotiations and hopefully have a conversation with you. So as you all know, in 2016, the Lake Michigan Committee decided to reduce Chinook salmon stocking. Um, in Lake Michigan. That was based on the prey data. You saw the 2015 data was really, really low and we were scared that we we're going to crash the fishery. Um, after making that public to all of you, a lot of anglers were upset that we were only reducing shuck salmon and they wanted us to consider other species. So for the last really two and a half years I've been working with you folks and, and other angler groups to come up with a plan. So. Um, I'm, I'm basically going to discuss what we came up with. So for brown trout, uh, we were stocking over 500,000 brown trout. We have reduced that down to just under 300,000. And you can see the distribution. Unfortunately, our plan was that we cut all of southern Lake Michigan. The return rates were really bad. Um, it was costing up to $400 per fish to the creel. And to me, I'm not a businessman, but that's, uh, that's not a really good return on your investment. So uh, we've got Southern Lake Michigan. Um, we're concentrating them all pretty much from um, Ludington up to Glen Arbor area with a couple of outliers there. Uh, we think this is the best spot where we can get the best survival of our stock fish. Um, you may not be able to see this blue line. So this is the area we're talking about. We think the survival will be better because they're closer to deep water. So in the summer when it gets hot, they can hopefully find water, colder water out deep, which is closer to the shore. Or they have these tributaries like the PM, Betsy, that are colder that maybe they can run up and get some temperature refuge. So we're going to try this for three or four years and see if we can increase our, our, our krill catch in that area. <clears throat> for lake trout, I know there was a lot of interest in us reducing lake trout. Um, we have to deal with five tribal nations in terms of our stocking. So um, I tried to negotiate various options with them and didn't get anywhere. So the only place I could reduce uh, lake trout was in the southern Lake Michigan. So we've zeroed out now St. Joe, Holland, and Grand Haven where we had near shore stocking. Um, so that all of the lake trout now are stocked from Ludington North. With most of them up in what's called the uh, Northern Refuge area. And um, Matt kind of talked about where these refuge areas are, but we're concentrating all of our stocking now mostly up in this area, and some in the Mid Lake Reef, and uh, he mentioned Illinois with the Julians. Coho, we uh, we did reduce, yep. Yeah. Um, I'm a lake trout. You're talking just Michigan, right? Correct. Michigan stocking this is what water. Michigan stocked. Well, okay. which is stocked in Michigan water. Okay. okay. So in Southern Lake Michigan, you're not putting any lake trout in as of right now. Correct. Grand Haven South. Correct. Are, are the other agencies, are Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin stocking in yeah. that area? Uh, um, Indiana is no longer stocking. Um, Illinois stocking 150,000 on Julian's Reef. Wisconsin stocking 300,000 on the Mid Lake Reef. Michigan's putting about 70,000 on the Mid Lake Reef. Yep. The as part of the stocking reduction, Wisconsin reduced the Mid Lake Reef by 30, 300,000. So that was reduced in half. Illinois has not reduced yet, but I expect they'll reduce their stocking in half pretty soon. Or more. For coho, we did reduce um, some, um, but there's still quite a distribution of where we're stocking them. Some new sites where we're going to start stocking is uh, the Kalamazoo River in Saugatuck. 
Well, well, actually, the Kalamazoo River up in the Allegan Dam is where they're stocked, but we're going to start putting fish there. Um, we've moved some more fish in the Grand River system. We've added the Muskegon River, and we've reduced the flat. So trying to spread those fish out a little bit more. They do create some unique fisheries. We had a, a, a experiment on the Savo River, which is Ludington State Park, where we started putting uh, 40 to 50,000 coho there, and they instantly, with it, I mean, they came back as jacks. And this year, they should be, I mean, they were bigger fish. They showed up uh, late in the fall. They were there from November to February. So it, it adds to a, a more of a fall fishery. And uh, for Chinook salmon, this is what everyone was waiting for. Um, so we um, are pretty close to what we were. So after all the to-do of people being upset of us reducing shut salmon, you know, we're within 50,000 or so of where we were. So the, how we're going to stock these is I feel that to get over the predator threshold, you need to stock as many as you can at a particular site. So it made no sense to spread small numbers across all these stocking sites. So we went to an other, every other year stocking plan. So you get a little bit more fish per stocking, but you have to wait every other year. Um, I still think you're going to get um, better returns this way. We'll see if it works. But when we're seeing fish returning at one, two, three year olds and some fours, that you're getting a, a little bit um, coming back all the time. So, so where we're going to be stocking these fish? Um, so for next year or this this year, fish going in. It's going to be Medusa by Charlevoix, Little Man of Steve Weir, where we have our egg take. We've added Muskegon back. Um, we had a few years where we weren't stocking the Muskegon. Um, Grand Haven um, and St. Joe. So those stockings, you know, have increased quite a bit. Um, and then 2020, we'll be at Sagatuck, South Haven in Holland. Still at the Little Man of Steve Weir. The Manistee River and Manistee, oh, excuse me, Boardman and Manistee. And then steelhead often comes up. This is hard to read, but my point here is we haven't changed a thing with steelhead. We've been stocking around 500,000 plus every year. We're going to continue to do that. They're all mass marked, so we're not going to change them at all during the mass marking. And if anything, once we Get the upgrades done at our Thompson hatchery up in the UP. That'll allow us to uh, um, raise an extra 200,000 uh, larger uh, steelhead that we can add to it. So some of them will come to Lake Michigan, some may go to um, other Great Lakes. But if anything, we're going to increase steelhead. And we put them all over the place. So these blue dots are all stocking sites where we put steelhead. Um, with kind of a, a higher number that goes into St. Joe and, and Grand River. So regulation changes. I think I announced this last year, but it's official now. Um, yellow perch bag limit is 25. That's inland and on the Great Lakes. The exception is Lake Erie, which is still 50. Um, if any of you do a lot of tournaments, for the last couple of years, bass tournaments had to register. Now, bass tournaments and walleye tournaments and muskie tournaments have to register their tournaments on an online registration system, so just be aware of that. Drowned river mouth lakes, these are our type F lakes. This would be like Muskegon Lake, the Lower Kalamazoo, um, Portage Lake, PM Lake. Um, they're now open to drop shotting for many years. Um, they're closed. There's concerns about snagging of salmon, but it's, nobody's trying to snag salmon with a drop shot rig, so we've, we've basically taken that rule off, so you can use drop shot now. Um, and smelt um, changed to, used to be able to fish smelt with unlimited number of hooks. Now it's like the general regulation, you can only have six hooks total. Um, another regulation change that went just into immediate effect is on Grand Traverse Bay. Um, Dennis had mentioned this earlier, that it's a one fish bag limit, because um, we are in a penalty there. Hopefully that's only for one year, so in 2020 we'll go back to a two fish bag limit. 
Um, that took an immediate effect. Um, the NRC approved that last week, so that is the rule now. Um, another regulation that we're considering is a change to whitefish and cisco. Um, cisco are state threatened species. Um, our inland lakes, we're seeing their populations either go um, extirpated or low numbers, so we're trying to protect them on our inland lakes. And we're seeing recoveries happening on the Great Lakes, and we'd like to see that occur. So, uh, to manage it properly with a population that's decreasing inland, we'd like to reduce the limit to five. Uh, right now it's 12 fish. Um, and then on the Great Lakes, uh, maybe make it 10, um, and that, it's 12 right now. So, um, looking for your opinion on that. We can talk later about it if you do have an opinion. So just getting into what uh, the catch has been like lately, um, in 2018, 48% um, of the lake-wide harvest was uh, Chinook salmon, uh, followed by lake trout, steelhead, coho, and brown trout. So not as great as we were in the mid-2000s, but um, actually a little bit better distribution than we were in the BKD days. They're following the BKD. So things aren't terrible and seem to be increasing a little bit in Chinook. So in my opinion, we bottomed out with Chinook and we're going to start to see some slow increases, which I think is awesome. And this is lakewide. Here's just another, to give you an idea of numbers of lakewide harvest. The bottom, excuse me, the bottom again is the Chinook. Um, now this is coho, lake trout, brown, steelhead, walleye, and yellow perch. So overall our lake-wide harvest is, is low, um, but when you look at Chinook, we're, we're just above where we were post-BKD days. So on the increase, I'm seeing the, the harvest of other species start to increase. Again, look at 2015. I call that our bottom out year. Another thing we look at for condition of fish is Chinook salmon weight. And as you all know, the weights have been really going up, which is, tells me we have good balance between the number of Chinook out there, although the number's low, and the airway. The airway number is low, but they're in balance in terms of um, the ratio between them. And we hit uh, bottom in the early 2000s, things cranked up in 2012 went way down in 2015 again, which was a scare to us, and has been up ever since. And last year, there was a 20 pound average for H3 fish, which is fantastic. Uh, but this variability is still somewhat concerning. Look at what it was in the 90s, pretty steady and high. So that that's, indicates more stability. Number of shooks out there in terms of, of fingerlings. The, the blue is the stock, white is the wild. Obviously our numbers have gone down. We've, we've had stocking reductions since 1999 and wild production has been variable. Um, but um, we've kind of, again, kind of bottomed out and we're, we're maybe seeing a, a start of an increase, especially with wild fish. Any idea by what caused the huge spike in the wilds there? Um, this could have, it's one year, so hard to say, but it may have been an uh, influx of wild fish from Lake Huron. Um, could be just sampling air. At that point, we were sampling with a method called oxytetracycline, and there, um, if you don't get a good mark from the feed, that you're feeding the fish that makes the mark on them, you can get false indications of wild fish. So that could have been part of it. So. Jake, how yep. did that program work? The OTC and I'm the joint centers. Yeah, so in our hatchery systems, we had a food that we fed the, uh, the Chinook salmon that was oxytetracycline laden. As they fed on that and they grew, they, that oxytetracycline put a mark on their bony structures. So, uh, as, so we stocked them as marked fish as you all collected them, or caught them, I was one of the guys out there collecting them, um, taking vertebrae from the fish, putting them under a black light, and this uh, oxytetracycline mark would glow. 
So it was a fluorescent tracer, but you had, yep. to, get, you had to get the vertebrae. Yeah, or a, a bony structure, and vertebrae seemed to be an easy one to extract. So it wasn't like the fishermen wouldn't have any way of knowing. No, it. not it, not it. Be there. Yep. Okay. And our sample size wasn't nearly as as good as what we have with mass marking. So, so the predator prey ratio is something we're using to guide management, and that means stocking. Um, so we freaked out when we got close to this upper line, which is the upper limit, meaning we're in danger area. Um, we've since come down and we're closer to this blue line, which uh, is, is really a good balance spot. So I don't, this is always through 2017. We don't have the 2018 data yet, but once I get that, we'll start talking about whether we're gonna stay the course or increase stocking. Um, we should have had this information by now, but you all know that we had the federal, um, uh, where the federal workers weren't working for a while, and we rely on federal workers to get this data analyzed. So we hope to get it done soon. The commercial statute, I'm not going to say much about this other than it's one statute that we need to get done soon um, because it will help us with our treaty negotiations. So Dennis mentioned that they're trying to get something going with it. So I hope that you may not agree with state commercial fishing and some aspects of it, but please uh, let your representatives and senators know that it's important to get a new statute done. Um, if we don't, then it, it puts us in a, a not so good place with our treaty negotiation. So, um, someone, someone asked how many licenses there are, state licenses. We have 50 licenses statewide, 33 are active, and only eight are active on Lake Michigan. So, is there a question? I'll talk to you later. Yeah, okay. Just some basic things we want to do. We want to modernize uh, various aspects of the statute, uh, make the fees and fines and penalties more worthwhile. Uh, a lot of this stuff is back, uh, written back in the 70s and hasn't been updated, so it needs to be updated. Um, what if you're a charter captain, one part of this commercial fishing is that you need to have a sport trolling license. If we get a new statute, we remove that. Um, so there's some incentive there. Um, we need better reporting um, from these groups. Um, we'd like to have more um, public involved with the management of commercial fishing. So we have citizens advisors for sport fishing uh, groups, but we don't have them for commercial fishing, so we'd like to do that. Um, and there's interest, at least from the commercial fishers, and I know some of the sport fish groups are having trouble with this, but um, having lake trout and walleye by, by catch allowances. reason why they want it is because the tribal commercial guys already have it. So it puts them on a level playing field with our state commercial fish. Yeah. The other big thing, we're one year away from renegotiations. Um, this is going to be huge as half of the Lake Michigan that I manage is part of the treaty area. And... Um, so if you've got interest um, and comments on how things are working or not working with this existing consent decree, um, let me know or let Dennis know um, so we can um, have that as part of the negotiation team. Um, unfortunately, the tribes have, re um, have not wanted to start negotiations. We hope that will happen soon. Um, Steelheaders is part of a group that's amici or friends of the court, so they basically help give us recommendations on what you'd like to see uh, in terms of the negotiation process. So, things we're looking at uh, are allocations of fish. So this would be lake trout um, and other species, how much the state gets, how much the, the tribes get. We'll be working on various zones, harvest limits. We need to better share data. You all complain about net marking, so we want to get net marking better. Reporting, enforcement, safety, communications, these are all topics that we want to work with with the tribes. So that is a quick um, overview. Um, this picture, yellow perch, this is out of Holland last fall, August. So one thing I didn't talk about is yellow perch. I'm seeing our creel data in um, throughout the lake that yellow perch is getting better. So I don't know if you're seeing that or not, but 
It catches up and down the lake from Charlevoix all the way down to St. Joe have, have been better than what they've been in a long time, I think. So.